Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. I've been recently posting some shorts on the HTTP client and on one of the shorts I got this following comment which essentially says why don't you wrap the HTTP client into using statement. And this brings me the idea that we tend to use HTTP client wrong in so many ways. So what I would like to do in this video is to show exactly what the problems and the caveats with the HTTP client are and how to actually use it correctly. Also bear in mind that in this video we'll concentrate only on the HTTP client and how it works, not on HTTP client factory which is the default and the best way actually to use the HTTP client in .NET 7 or starting with ASP.NET Core 2.1 for that matter. But the idea behind this video is that I want us to understand exactly what the problems with the HTTP client are and that's also the explanation why it is the best way to use IHTTP client factory in ASP.NET Core application. So let's get to work. What we have here is a very simple application and we, what we do essentially we use the send HTTP requests method and in this one we create a for loop and this means that we virtually go through this loop 10 times. And for each iteration what we do is we create a new HTTP client and we wrap it in using and then we just make a simple call and display the result status code to the console because we don't really care about the response itself. Now the idea is that what we do here is what we would regularly do with each class that implements iDisposable, so we wrap it into using. And if we take a look at the HTTP client, we see that it inherits this HTTP message invoker, and this HTTP message invoker inherits this or implements iDisposable. So theoretically, we would be tempted to say, hey, this is the right way to use an iDisposable, wrapping it in using. To really show you where the actual problems are, I will also use a CLI tool that we have in Windows, which is Netstat. And Netstat is a tool that helps us to see and or take a look at the outgoing or the existing TCP connections. So let's run the application and I'll also bring the CLI and here I'll run this common netstat find because I just want to look into some specific results. One thing that we can see here is that the connections or the HTTP clients are long disposed because we have exited that entire loop. And guess what? What you see here are these open 10 connections with this status of time wait, even though I have wrapped this in to a using. The reason for this kind of like doesn't have to do directly with the HTTP client, but the way that the TCP protocol is implemented. So let me briefly explain how this works. Now, when a connection is opened and after the communication succeeds, our application will send a connection finalizing a knowledge to the remote host. And actually it's waiting for that remote host to answer to know that it has received that last acknowledgement. And the way this works is, is that the client side, in this case, my computer or the, the requests that are made via my applications would wait for double the MSL. MSL is something that's called its maximum segment length. And by default on most Windows machine, that MSL is two minutes. So it means that for each of the connections that we made, it will wait double that. So for each connection, four minutes until it will finally close this connection. Now I have sent here only 10 requests, but imagine if my application, for instance, it's an API or something like that, that heavily relies on external services. Like for instance, when you're using microservices, now it means that I would have thousands of different requests. And due to the fact that it will keep these connections open, at a certain point, we will run into the problem that we will call socket exhaustion. So it doesn't really have place or space for any other new connections. And in that case, obviously your application might break. So to solve this problem, the best practice and the recommendation with the HTTP client class, even if it implements or inherits this is disposable, is to kind of like reuse the HTTP client. So that's why something that we could do is that we can instantiate the client here and just, just send it to the method so that it uses the same client every time. Now, obviously in this case, we don't need this line of code anymore, so we can simply remove it and our application should still be working. Obviously, we also need to pass the HTTP client as a method parameter and now everything should be good to go. Now let's run the application again and run also netstat again. So you see that in this case, Instead of having 10 different connections, we have only one, which is from my point of view, a very nice improvement. 
What we're doing here is that we simply assign this HTTP client to a variable and pass it down to a method so that the same HTTP client is used all the time. However, in practice, you might probably have different types of service classes that would use an HTTP client. So let's take a moment and try to implement that and see exactly what we can learn from, from it. Let me create a new class in this same file, which is called this my API service. Now we can now move different things that we have here in this new class. First of all, we'll create a new method in this class, which we'll call send API requests. Now in this method, we can reuse the things that we have done earlier. So first of all, let's write in the console and create a new instance of the HTTP client. And then let's go through the loop and make the corresponding API requests. And now we can simply delete everything that we have here because we don't need this anymore. And as you can see from here, the challenge is that in this case, when we have moved everything to kind of like a service class, just creating a new HTTP client and assigning it to a variable might not work properly because each time a new instance of my API service will be called and each time this send API request method will be called, we will create a new instance of the HTTP client. And that's why the recommendation in this case is to actually have this HTTP client as a field. And in that case, we can simply just reuse the same client. Now, obviously we can remove it from here and we just need to make sure that we have this underscore here and now we are still good to go. However, we haven't really solved this problem because now each time that we instantiate a new My API service, we will have a new HTTP client and this doesn't really also help a lot. But what it does help and it is also the final recommendation when you're using the HTTP client like this, is to make this actually a static field. And being a static field, this will make this HTTP client de facto behave like a singleton. So it means that no matter how many times we instantiate a new My API service instance, we will get always the same HTTP client and that is actually good. Now the problem is that maybe at some point for some of the domains that you are calling, the IP address will change. And then when the DNS TTL or time to leave will expire, your calls using this HTTP client will fail. But obviously there's a solution to this problem also. The constructor of the HTTP client also takes in a handler and we can use this socket HTTP handler, which is nowadays probably the most widespread used handler for the HTTP client. And on this handler, we have this pooled connection lifetime and we can specify here a time interval to which basically the connection will be repulled. And this will solve the problem when you will have the DNS changes for your domains. And now in this form, the HTTP client for this specific service class should work as recommended. But as you see, the thing is, or the main problem or the main pain here is that we need to think about how do we respond to DNS changes, about how do we take care that we don't exhaust our sockets and so on and so forth. And that's precisely the reason why in .NET it is recommended that we use the IHTP client factory. Because when we use IHTP client factory, the .NET will take care about all this stuff for us so we don't really need to trouble our mind with this type of responsibilities. But if you want a video on HTTP client factory where I will tell you really everything you need to know about it to get started and to understand exactly how it works and in which scenarios the different types of clients are suitable, then please let me know in the comments and I will make sure I will create a video on that. Also, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel if you're for the first time here. And if you have any question or comment or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave me a comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.